If you're watching this video, you obviously know about the Boston bomb attack that just recently occurred. And you were probably horrified by it, you're probably sickened, but you're also, you also might have been thinking to yourself, if I would have been there, what would I have done? Or what could I have done? Well, if you're watching my videos, you're probably a responsible citizen and thank you for watching them. You probably are also someone that goes about armed all the time. When you leave your home, you go about armed. Why do we go about armed? Why do we go about our lives armed? Because we don't know what's out there. We don't know what we're going to encounter when we walk out of our front door. Now, when you have an attack, like a bomb attack, it doesn't have to be a bomb attack, but some kind of a mass casualty situation where there's more people bleeding than there are people to take care of them. You can't shoot the wound closed with your pistol. You have to ask yourself, what could I do? You say, well, I'll take off my shirt and I'll tear it up and I'll make it into bandages or I'll pull my belt off and I'll make it into a, you know, a makeshift tourniquet or what have you. Yes, you can do those things, but there's ready-made gear that's a lot better than pulling off your shirt and tearing it into rags or taking off your belt or searching for a belt and a, and a stick and all that. So what we're gonna talk about today real quick is what I like to call the pocket lifesaver. Now right here, if you guys have been paying attention to my videos or any amount of time, you know this is my truck bag, this is my go bag, and on the outside of it, I have my own blowout kit. And this blowout kit has everything you would need to save somebody's life from the big three. And what are the big three? Major bleeding, loss of an airway, and a tension pneumothorax. So, but this is a big kit. I, I think most of you people you know, understand or you're thinking, yeah, that's great, but when I'm walking around the mall with my kids, I'm not gonna have a pack that size on me. Or let's say you're standing on the street corner and you're watching, watching the Boston Marathon or what have you, you're, are you gonna have a kit this big on you or is it gonna be in your truck? Is it gonna be in your vehicle? And what we've been trying to do with Student of the Gun is come up with effective ways or an effective way to carry the minimum amount of gear that you would need to save a life and we're pretty close and I'm gonna show you what I've got right here. Now I'm wearing shorts in the cargo pocket of the shorts I've got what I'm calling uh, essentially the the micro or the pocket lifesaver. Now in this bag this is it's uh, if, I'll hold it up for you guys it is a vacuum sealed bag and what is inside here? Well let's open it up. Tear it open and inside what have I got? First and foremost, if you have a major bleed, I've got a TK4 tourniquet. Now, if you guys know me, you know that I don't really like the TK4. Uh, the TK4 is not my first choice in tourniquets. There's several reasons why that is. Uh, but the TK4 is lightweight, it's inexpensive, and it's compact. You can, as you saw, the entire tourniquet was fit right in that little bag plus all that other stuff. So can you stop a major bleed with a TK4? Yes. Is it tough sometimes? Yes it is. But I'd rather have a TK4 than be searching around for belts or ropes or something. You know, you don't have a whole lot of time when someone, if they have a severed limb, and severed limbs I know we're, you know, we're thinking about the bombing attack, but severed limbs occur in rollover car crashes or high-speed car crashes. A lot of times you'll have a partially or completely amputated limb. How do you shut that blood flow off? Well, you gotta shut it off quick, fast, in a hurry. And we don't have time, if I'm bleeding to death, I don't have time for you to go running around the woods looking for stuff to make a tourniquet out of. So the TK4 is, it's better than nothing. It's kind of that lifeboat thing or life jacket. I'd rather have one than not. What else is in there? Well, I've got an entire roll of Curlex gauze. I can stuff wounds, I can wrap wounds. If it's big and nasty, I can wrap it up. So I've got an entire roll of Curlex gauze right there. What else do I have in there? Well, I've got my nose hose, my nasal pharyngeal or my NPA. Uh, this maintains an open airway on who? On conscious patients that are screaming, ah, my arm, my, my arm, my leg? No. This is for unconscious people to make sure that they maintain an open airway. And what's the last thing that will kill you? Tension pneumothorax, right? You've got a hole in a lung, your chest cavity, your pleural space fills up with air, starts pushing against the heart, that's bad juju. How do you stop, how do you plug the hole? Well, you need to plug the hole with something adhesive. And what I've done on both sides, I folded it over, I've got duct tape, put it right over the wound. If there's an exit wound, I got it right there. Once you put the bandage on, if you want to secure the bandage with the tape, you just put the duct tape on the outside of the, of the package and it stays there. And you also, what else do you have? 
Well, I've got my plastic, so if it's a big hole, if it's bigger than, than what the, uh, the tape can cover, you can take your plastic and put it right over there and seal the hole in the chest. So real quick, oh, and almost forgot, almost forgot guys, our decomp needle. If you have a no kidding tension pneumothorax developing, you've got to relieve it somehow. Now, does buying the gear give you the skill? No, buying the gear does not give you the skill. If you already have the skill and you're thinking, dude, I've got this big pack, but I don't carry it with me because I don't want to carry a big pack like this every time I go to the restaurant, the mall, shopping, what have you. I got you. The pocket lifesaver, something that's small enough to slip into a side cargo pocket, every time you get dressed and you put all your gear on, you put your gun on, a flashlight, a knife in your pocket, what have you, grab the pocket lifesaver, throw it into a cargo pocket or a back pocket or something like that. If you're a lady, throw it into your purse, take it everywhere with you because you never know what could be around the corner.